What's in an atom? Well, most of an atom is empty space, surprisingly. There are three different particles. There's the proton and the neutron and the electron. And uh, in the middle of the atom, there's a region called the nucleus. And that uh, nucleus is made up of these particles called protons and neutrons, which we're going to talk more about later. And on the outside region, it's called the electron cloud. And this electron cloud is where the electrons are. And the electrons are, are moving around. You, you have to imagine this three-dimensional atom. Right now you're seeing it as two dimensions. But these electrons are flying around the outside of the nucleus. And uh, it's a region where you, you'll, you can find an electron. And they almost are acting like they're, they're everywhere and nowhere all at once. You can imagine a fan blade spinning around. And, uh, and that, that fan blade, you wouldn't want to stick your hand in there because you'd probably get your hand cut off. But the, the blades are you know, um, acting as if they're everywhere all at once, but then in some places they're not there all the time, but, um, but they're there very, very frequently. And electrons moving so fast, it's almost acting as if it's everywhere all at once. An atom is an incredibly small mass. Take, for example, a carbon atom. A typical carbon atom has a mass of 1.992 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. That's like saying if you had a decimal point and then 0, 0, 0, and a total of 22 zeros and then 1992 grams, that would be the mass of a typical carbon atom, the, the normal isotope of a carbon atom. Now, normally when you're talking about protons, neutrons, and electrons, the particles that make up an atom, they... Uh, you don't talk about them in terms of grams, you talk about them in terms of atomic mass units. So what is an AMU or an atomic mass unit? Well, it's one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom. A proton uh, has the mass of 1.007276 atomic mass units. A neutron is slightly heavier, but they're about the s they're, they're almost exactly the same um, mass. An electron is thousands of times smaller. As you can see, its mass unit is 0 0.0005486 atomic mass units. Uh, so an electron compared to a proton and a neutron, you can think of it as if you stepped on a scale and let's say you weigh, you know, 156 pounds and a fly landed on your head, um, that's not going to really change the the one fly landing on your head is not going to change the, the weight of that scale. That's, you can compare your, your body mass um, to the protons and neutrons, and then that fly landing on your head is maybe the mass of an electron compared to the amount of, you know, the mass of the protons and neutrons inside of an atom. So it's very, very thousands of times um, smaller than the mass of a proton and neutron. So protons and neutrons are very massive compared to an electron. They both have a mass number of 1, or 1 AMU, um, and the electron has a mass number of 0 because its mass is negligible in comparison to the proton and neutron. According to Bill Bryson in A Short History of Nearly Everything, on page 140 and 141 I'm going to read you uh, a little bit about protons and neutrons compared to the mass of an electron. Protons and neutrons and protons occupy the atom's nucleus. The nucleus of an atom is tiny, only one millionth of a billionth of the volume of an atom, but t fantastically dense, since it contains virtually all of the atom's mass. As Kruper has put it, if an atom were expanded to the size of a cathedral, the nucleus would be only about the size of a fly, but a fly many thousands of times heavier than the cathedral. It was this spaciousness, this resounding, unexpected roominess that Rutherford, that had Rutherford scratching his head in 1910. So, if you can imagine, there's the fly is the the nucleus, many times, thousands of times heavier than the cathedral, and it's this. Uh, um, the, the, the atom is mostly made out of empty space, but the protons and neutrons, they're the, the big boys, big particles of the atoms in the nucleus, and the electron is, is very, um, very light, uh, very li doesn't have very much mass at all. As far as charges, the electron has a charge of negative 1, proton a charge of positive 1, and a neutron has a charge of 0. Uh, the... Uh, 
Location of the electron is in the electron cloud. And the location of the proton and neutron, they are both found in the nucleus in the center of the atom. So a quick review, the protons and neutrons, most of the atom's mass is found in the nucleus. And uh, the electrons, they are found in the electron cloud. The electrons have a negative charge. The protons have a positive charge. And the neutrons have no charge or a neutral charge. So protons, these are what give the atom its identity. It, the number of protons an atom has is, uh, is specific to a, a particular atom and a particular element. And so the number of protons is also called the atomic number. For example, the atom, an atom of lithium, it has three protons. So on the periodic table, uh, lithium is number three. And that three means that there's no other atom on the whole, and, uh, there's no other element um, or other type of atom that has three protons. Gold doesn't have three protons. Helium doesn't have three protons. The only type of atom that has three protons is lithium. Whereas if you look at the, on the periodic table, the element above lithium is hydrogen that has one proton. Um, all hydrogen atoms have one proton, but there's no other type of element um, that, has, that has one proton. So a proton gives uh, an element its identity um, and describes what type of atom you're dealing with. Another thing you should know is that a neutral atom has the same number of protons and electrons. What does this mean? For example, a typical lithium atom has, it always has three protons. If you're going to say you have a, a lithium atom that's neutral, well, three protons means that its total charge would be plus three. Each proton has a positive charge of plus one, so three protons would be plus three. If you had three electrons uh, in the electron cloud around that lithium atom, each electron has a charge of negative one, and so three electrons would give you a total charge of negative three. Well, if you add up plus three and minus three, your total charge is zero. Remember, we're not even worried about the neutrons. The neutrons have a zero charge, so if you add zero to anything, it's always the same the same number. So if you add up the protons, add up the electrons, they come up to a total charge of zero, uh, which means it's a neutral atom. It doesn't have a positive or negative charge to it. And uh, so that's important to know about the atom. Another good thing to know about the atom is that the protons and the neutrons, even though they're a subatomic particle, they're smaller than the atom and they make up the atom, there are actually other smaller particles that make up the protons and neutrons themselves, and these particles are called quarks. And so scientists have been able to break apart these neutrons and protons into these smaller particles called quarks. Electrons, um, it is a, the smallest particle um, that they, you can't break an electron into a smaller particle that we know of yet. Some information about quarks. Protons and neutrons are not fundamental particles. Uh, they are made up of smaller particles. Protons are made up of two up quarks and one down quark. So you can see right here that there's a proton. And each up quark is said to have a plus two-thirds charge. So if you have two up quarks and, uh, and then a down quark is said to have a negative one-third charge. And so if you add up the charge of two up quarks and one down quark, you actually get plus one, so and that's the charge of a, a proton. Neutrons are made up of one up quark and two down quarks, so here would be a neutron, and a neutron, obviously, if you have two down quarks, each down quark has a negative one-third charge, and an up quark has a positive two-thirds charge. If you add that all up, it comes out to be zero, which is the charge of a neutron. Um, quarks, they're held together, um, by gluons and strong, f and, uh, and the protons and neutrons are held together by strong forces. If you want to get more into this, you'll, uh, 
you'll have to obviously do some more studying on the nucleus and, and, and particle physics and and you might get more into this in, in college if you take an uh, upper level physics course in college uh, but you will not get quizzed on any part of quarks for um, any exam in the future. Please watch the next video on counting protons, neutrons, and electrons.